This week I learned you're never too old to avoid getting poison oak on a camping trip. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are shutting down April. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, been an exciting week, uh, guys. Lots of <laughs> lots of fun things and not so fun things going on in my world. Uh, yeah, I did uh, take the boys camping for scouts, and you know, as a parent, you sit there the whole time. You tell them, "Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Be careful of this. Look out for that." And then apparently, I touched a tree while we were putting up the tent that was poison oak so good times right now i've got it covered up i didn't figure you guys you know want to see any of that i thought it might be nice and distracting for you the whole episode but uh yes it's up here i've already got the jokes about you know did you not watch where you squat and things like that uh no it wasn't we weren't we weren't out in the wilderness guys we were you know it was a campground so they had actual you know plumbing and stuff so that wasn't the problem it's just we were in like this little uh, cubby of space around trees and i guess i touched one of them while we were putting the, the, the tent up because it was a tight squeeze getting in that little spot there but hey you live and you learn it's been itching a lot i'll probably itch while i do this video so uh exciting times ahead but uh let's do like usual guys let's talk about what i am reading i did finish homeland by r.a salvatore this is the first book in the dark elf trilogy by uh by mr salvatore first book of the legend of dritz so this was something i had recently talked about that i wanted to get into and i went ahead and started it and uh finished it and it was very very good i i, I liked it quite a bit uh, the thing was like i got sold about how good of a uh, action writer he is what i never really expected in this was how good the house politics were they're really good like song of ice and fire level like twists and turns i really really like uh the just the messed up just brutal world of Menzo Brands. It's really, really cool stuff. I had a great, great time with it. And uh, yeah, I was so excited about it. I couldn't wait. And uh, I went ahead and picked up Exile. And what do you know? I finished that one too. So guys, these read even faster than Dresden Files. I've got people being like, how are you reading these so fast? These are seriously two, three days tops. And that's with work. Uh, you really can sit down and knock out 100 pages super quick. And they're only like 300 pages each. But uh, yeah, uh, really cool stuff. I don't feel like there's very many wasted pages in these so you can kind of fly through everything there's not a lot of anything bogging you down but uh, this one much more of an adventure because uh, you know our character is kind of on the run so to speak and you meet lots of secondary characters and uh I, this is where i started learning that uh, salvatore's kind of brutal uh he will kill some characters you know i should have expected the guy that killed a major legacy character in this first star wars book with vector prime back in the day yeah Maybe he ain't got a problem killing off some of his characters. So, uh, yeah, I was a little bit surprised that one of, them, one of the deaths in here was like, oh, come on, it's so sad. But uh, very well done. And it really did come full circle with uh, with, with uh, Dritz and a character, uh, uh, Zagnafane, from the first book. Really, really great, great stuff uh, as he ties up everything kind of in there. Leading to book number three, which I also started, guys, was Sojourn. And what do you know? I finished it this morning. So, yes, I did do the whole trilogy in a week. And the thing is, guys, you look at these and... I'm usually killing a fantasy book about that size in a week, you know, so it's not really that remarkable. This one I'm a little more mixed on. I, I kind of felt like this one was, it almost felt like he was writing uh, Adventures of Driss uh, really just in like a magazine, a monthly magazine or something. This kind of compiled them all into one. And a lot of veterans that are on the Discord for the series, uh, they've been telling me that Really, it's because with this is, since it was wrote after Icewind Dale, that it really just had to get Dritz back in place to where he would be in Icewind Dale, uh, basically for the start of the first book, which is Crystal Shard, which I'll be doing uh, this summer. But uh, yeah, I, I had a great time with this trilogy. I'm really excited where it goes. Uh, uh, Guinevar is already an addendum to my favorite animal companions list, for sure. Uh, but uh, Driss is a much more uh, layered and thoughtful character than I thought he was going to be. I thought I really was expecting like a Guts from Berserk, just uh, you know, full on OP damage character. He's got a lot of that, but uh, I, I don't think that uh, you know he's got any of those things where you're going to kind of be like, oh yeah, what this thing again? Uh, you know, isn't like he wins everything. It, it, this isn't a, a Mary Sue kind of thing. But there are some things I think that uh, you know, we'll talk about when I do review these. So I'm going to review those as a whole. I think instead of uh, instead of uh, single volumes, because I think that'd be the best. Because they're such short reads, I think the best way to do that would be like you know arcs. So guys, that really was uh, my week. Uh, I did. Speaking of Berserk, I did finish volume number 34 of Berserk, which is you know 
the penultimate volume of the Falcon Millennium Empire arc. So you guys that have been waiting patiently, it's going to happen. I'm going to finish it in May. So uh, very, very exciting times. But uh, that's what I read this week. So go ahead and look ahead to what am I going to read. Now, I want to tell you guys up front, I am leaving for a family vacation. In fact, while you're watching this, uh, the family vacation has already started. We are taking the kids to Great Wolf Lodge. It's like an indoor water park. It has an outdoor one too, but it's something that they've wanted to do for a while. And we finally said, hey, I think this is a great year because we were planning on doing Disney and then that trip just, we don't know if that trip's ever going to happen. So we said, yeah, it's not quite Disney guys, but you know, at least it's something, you know. So I, I think that and, uh, and something else we got planned for the summer, I think they'll be happy. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're about to turn 10 and 7. They're happy with that. But I'm just saying that that will probably kind of leach into my reading time here. You know, on the camping trip, I was able to uh, read a little more because there's a lot of downtime camping. This, uh, I don't know. We will see. But I am taking this with me on the camping trip. This first book that I've read by Bernard Cornwell. This is The Winter King, the first book of the Warlord Chronicle, which is his take on on the Arthurian legend. So uh, I always wanted to read Bernard Cornwell, or always, since I discovered, you know, uh, Last Kingdom. And I said, well, I don't know if I want to start with a 13-book series with the authors. So people have said, this is the best place to start. Plus, I love the Arthurian legend. I've read Thomas Mallory's book a couple times. I was obsessed with it in high school. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to finally dip into this. But uh, yeah, that'll be the one that I'm taking with me on the trip. I would be stunned if I really get to read a lot there, because I'm pretty sure at the end of the day, I'm going to be just as tired as the kids are, because uh, family vacation, guys, it's a lot of work. People don't think it is, but it really is, especially when you're going to a, a water park. So we shall see. But, you know, after that, guys, it's just that's that's really my plans uh, for this month is this trilogy. I don't know how fast these read. I don't know how long they take. They don't look overly long. Uh, decent sized font, I guess, uh, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so I don't want to tell you guys a bunch of plans I got if I'm not going to, I mean, at least in the next week, I'm not going to read all three of these. These aren't Dritz books. I'm not going to be going through these that quick, but uh, that's really all I got, and I'll be taking my iPad, so I'll have a Berserk Volume 35, so maybe I can finish that one while I am there, but that is really all I've got planned for the, uh, the going to read section right now so let's go ahead and move along guys to this week on the channel I did do a couple of things here uh obviously the poison oak thing did delay things a little bit so that's why uh this is coming out over the weekend instead of the usual friday because i just I, I missed a day or two guys because i was just tranked on drugs you know benadryl like knocks me out like unconscious so uh if you ever want to drug me you want to put something in my coffee benadryl that's the way to go these are the insider tips that you guys need on this channel anyway so, uh, we did the uh, back into the multiverse. Uh, we went back into the multiverse and talked about Insomnia, a book by Stephen King. I think it's a kind of a bad reputation from King fans, and it was myself included. But I had a much different reading experience this time around because I had read The Dark Tower, whereas the first time I had not. So it was just really, really screwy and out there. But after you read The Dark Tower, so much of it makes so much more sense now. And I think this is the point in King's career where he really had the ending of Dark, Dark Tower in mind. It's a couple years away still from Wizard and Glass, it's Dark Tower number four. But it started with Needful things or a couple years prior to that. That started to seem like the time that he started being like, I'm going to start working all of this stuff in the Dark Tower and just assume that people have read it or they'll get interested in what this is and they will read it. So uh, I give him props for bravery. And obviously, he had enough of a career at that point. He could do whatever he wanted, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was really a good read this go around. I love talking about it. And a lot more fans in the comments than I expected, you know, that really did like it. And there were even some who said, They've never read Dark Tower and they enjoyed it. So uh, I think the, it, it is a slow-paced read. It's not going to quite be the page-turner that a lot of Stephen King books are. So uh, it's a big one. It's a big one. It's over 800 pages on hardcover. So uh, if you're looking for that kind of a slow-burn adventure, I, I think you'll be happy. But uh, it's just it's going to be kind of a different experience for everybody. But if you've read Dark Tower, guys... It's really, really cool. It really, really is. So that's all I will say about it. You can watch that video if you want to hear me say more about it. I did want to talk more about the Star Wars Expanded Universe because that's something I've said on the channel a lot that I just I love to death. But uh, every time I do a live stream, I, I get so many questions about where should I start with the Star Wars EU? And I always tell them the Thrawn trilogy, you know, and they don't seem to say, yeah, but what else? So I decided to, to make a video just where you should start with the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Just kind of like what you're looking for and where you want to start kind of thing. It's kind of like that. I'll, I'll tell you where things take place. I'll tell you kind of briefly what they're about and if you'd be into them and if I think that you should start there. And uh, it's kind of wild that people ask me 
for so long to make that video, and then I make it, and then they don't listen to it. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and start with New Jedi Order. But I'm never going to get mad when people say they want to read the New Jedi Order because I think that that is a super underrated series, and uh, it's it's one of my favorite arcs in all of the expanded universe. So uh, the EU is is never anything that's going to kind of blow up on my channel, but it's always going to be something I'm interested to talk about because it's been such a huge part of my life, and uh, I would love to share that with other people because uh, if you're like me and you just aren't feeling what Disney has done to Star Wars, hey, you've got that really, really awesome universe, and who cares if they said it's not canon? be whatever you want it to be, right? And that's the way I kind of consider it. So the Star Wars EU, check it out. And I had to delay this video for a couple days because I, I I wanted to get I was still I was still kind of uh, doped up on the drugs and I tried making the the introduction for this uh, video of why you should read J.R.R. Tolkien. Now that's a question I don't feel like you know really needs an answering, but I get so many requests for it. I said why not? I'll wrap it into my Lord of the Rings coverage. I'm planning on doing. So uh, with the introduction for that, it took me like three hours to make, and I was not expecting that. But here's the thing. That's why I've avoided Tolkien stuff on this channel for so long, because I knew that I'd be such a perfectionist with it that nothing would be satisfying to me. Uh, so uh, pretty satisfied with the introduction for that video. I'm going to make sure I pulled some of the best quotes, some from the Silmarillion, you know, some from the Hobbit, some from the trilogy, things like that. Some from I think there's even one from Baron and Luthien in there. So uh, some, some good stuff all around, and uh, I, had, I had a good time talking about Tolkien, uh, my personal favorite fantasy author of all time, which I know is not a trendy pick. I mean, I guess it is a trendy pick. It's not like it's a, a rare gem here that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the most popular fantasy author of all time here. So it, it was something that was it was fun to do, and, and I do have some people already like, you know, I've never read it, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give it a try while you're doing this review series. So uh, that was just kind of the kickoff for it because uh, May, June, July, and August, I'm going to be running through those four main books, The Hobbit, uh, Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. So that's kind of just like the kickoff for it. So I'm excited to do it, even if I am kind of, you know, overly stressed about it. Because like I said, when it comes to Tolkien, I, I, I feel like I'm never going to be able to get the point across about why it's so special. But I do my best, guys. And um, I guess I guess I don't have anything else that happened this week, right? Yeah. Uh, like I said, this week's just been a whirlwind because of the medication and the, the, the itching and all that stuff. But uh yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and move along to uh, some next week plans here. Now, this is going to kind of be weird because we are going to be on vacation. Uh, we are leaving for, uh, we're going to be gone for five days. So, uh, I I've got some stuff kind of recorded in advance, but it's going to be stuff that's kind of like, really, you're doing that now, but it's because I'm not here, guys. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and move up my book hole for April 2022. Uh, that would obviously be a lot later, but like I said, that's one that I don't, I've already got all the materials I need. I don't have to put a lot of research or, or, or prep into it. I can just turn on the camera and talk about these awesome books that you guys sent me or ones that I treated myself to this month. And uh, that, so that's always going to be something easy for me to do. Uh, that'll probably be coming out Monday. I'll probably have that drop on Monday. And then when I get back, then I'll probably do my uh, just wrapping up the month, doing my usual wrapping April 2022, picking my book of the month, which I still... Haven't decided on yet. I got some good picks uh, to choose from in there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it's down to, but I, I did read 10 books, three of them manga, so seven books in the month. So lots of things to choose from. We're going to talk about all those like usual. And then for my review, I think I might, you know, this is kind of an on the fly thing. I ain't planning this. I think I might go ahead and uh, do the Dark Elf trilogy. Let's go ahead and talk about Driss and why uh i i think it was a really good read and uh if i think that you would like it or not so we'll talk about those things i think sometime this week that should be a lot of fun actually uh while it's fresh i'd like to talk about it because uh, i don't know when i'm going to get to icewind dale because may and june are really really packed tight with some big books uh but uh yeah by at least by the summer i'll be itching to get back to the forgotten realms uh also if you missed it uh it was a Last night, actually, uh, we talked uh, on Steve Talks Books channel, and uh, we would be myself, Steve, uh, Jimmy, of course, Jimmy Nuts, and, and Yolian, along with Philip. So it was a it was a full house, and we got to talk uh, all kinds of things. So I hope that you guys uh, will check that out if you haven't. Uh, it's the first time I've actually uh, interacted with Jimmy, so it's like it's one of those things where it seems like everything I get invited to, I, like I know who all these people are, and I honestly I know who Jimmy is. I just never actually ha had actually spoken to him before, so it was kind of fun getting that getting that uh, that icebreaker out of the way and getting that talk in and, and meeting him. Excited to see uh, all these new connections that I can make with fellow content creators. I'm always excited to do it. So 
There we go, guys. That kind of was uh, next week. I know that was kind of like not a next week thing. I just kind of thought about it there. So check it out if you haven't. I'll, I'll link it. And uh, thank you, Steve, as always, for inviting me, man. It is really, really fun to go on someone else's channel because I don't have to edit anything. That's the best. That's the best. So, guys, that's pretty much all I got for books. Uh, a couple of uh, TV and movie talk things. Look, guys, I feel like I've made it clear at this point that I'm not really watching the MCU anymore. I watch Spider-Man because if it's a Spider-Man movie, I'm watching it. It's just the rule. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman get watched no matter what. So but, um, so many people ask me, what about Love and Thunder? Thor, Love and Thunder. What do you think about that trailer? What else? Here's the thing. I love Thor Ragnarok. Uh, besides Guardians 1 and 2, I think that's the MCU movie I've watched the most. My kids love it. I love it. We all quote it non-stop we cannot stop we love that movie every saturday morning when it's like what do you want to do i can put something i can put on that's pleasing for everybody let's put on guardians or, or or thor ragnarok we love it we quote it non-stop so people are like well, why aren't you excited about love and thunder i don't know uh maybe it's because i am i mean this is going to be maybe something that some people hate to hear uh i i read the jane foster Thor comic arc and i hated it couldn't stand it and i think if they're adapting that i'm just like ugh. Not really where I would have gone with it. However, I do like Taiki Watiti's movies, so uh, I will give it the benefit of the doubt. But am I like, am I like counting the days to it? No, guys, those days with the MCU died for me with Endgame. That was that was the end for me as far as like counting down. I'm not interested in a lot of the other stuff that they're doing now. However, Thor obviously is a character I still really really like. I think Hemsworth is great as him, so it's going to be kind of a wait and see for me on that one. Uh, like I said, I just don't like that comic arc. So uh, we'll see. We'll see with that. Hoping it's not the bait and switch thing that a lot of things are doing now. Because the last thing that, as a consumer, the last thing that I enjoy is, hey, here's something you love, but we're going to replace it with something that you don't really care about. That, that, that's what I kind of felt about the uh, the Jane Foster's Thor comic arc. So if that's what the movie is, uh, I don't know. I don't know. So um, I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, like I said, because I do think Watiti does some really, really great things. He has a, a brand of humor that I really do enjoy, and I think that he, uh, he he pretty much brought that character back from the dead after you know Dark World. So uh, I'll give him some credit there, but am I, again, uh, it'll be a wait for video for me. So uh, obviously the Batman, the sequel, uh, The Batman Part 2 got announced. I think that was a no-brainer. Uh, the movie made really, really great money, had really great reviews, good reception from fans. So it was a no-brainer, really. It was like, does Matt Reeves want to do this? And Matt Reeves apparently wants to do plenty of these Batman movies. So that's great. Uh, I say give him the keys. Let him do what he wants to do. Sounds like there's some major changes going on at Warner Brothers in, in regard to DC. And they need them, in my opinion. So uh, I think the, the the standalone thing that they're doing, you know, uh, dropping the connected. You do the connected universe, you're always just going to be compared to Marvel. And they're never going to win that. So I, I think the thing to do is like that. You know, do your Joker movie and let it stand on its own. Do your Batman movies, let it stand on its own. Give me a Green Lantern movie, let it stand on its own. I think that's the way to go forward for them. So, yeah, uh, it's a step in the right direction. Now, guys, this isn't a TV or movie talk thing, uh, but I don't know where else to put it. I, I got to talk about this Elon Musk buying Twitter thing. Now, I don't do the identity politics or what people are fighting about thing on the channel. You guys know that. But what I do talk about is business. I will talk about business things. I am a business major, so these things always are something that I want to discuss. Now, with this, uh, I will say up front that I do admire Elon Musk because I live in Houston, guys, and NASA is a very big thing here, and space travel with NASA was pretty much dead. And Elon Musk came back and said, you know what? I got this. And with SpaceX, he's basically taking us back to space. So it isn't like a brand loyalty to NASA, guys. We just really love, uh, you know, space exploration. And I think that Elon Musk is like the last chance in my lifetime of seeing a human being set foot on Mars. You know, so I've always greatly admired him for that. He's always been a personal hero to me for what he's tried to advance in space travel. Uh, I mean, if you guys watched my thing about my Dodge Challenger, I'm not into the electric vehicle thing yet. Uh, I'm not saying I won't be there someday. Uh, but yeah, I, again... It's something. It's just two things that this guy has done that is just absolutely incredible. He's took on the auto industry and he's pretty much just took it over. And now he and then he took over, you know, basically space travel. Now he's trying to take on social media. And I saw at first. I saw when he first made the bid, people were like, "Oh, there's no way he's going to do this." And I'm like, "I don't know why people keep doubting this guy." 
Uh, say whatever you want about him personally. As a businessman, he gets things done. He knows what he's doing. He's very intelligent. He's a marketing genius, without a doubt. And having a minor in marketing, you know, I'm all about this. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I get the reasons that he's doing it, and I think it's a uh, it's a move that uh, I can see why he wants to do it. I, I really I really do because uh, I, I think Twitter's kind of gotten a reputation the last uh, five, six, seven years as just being like just a really toxic environment. And if he wants to kind of change that, uh, I'm the one at this point. Like I said, I don't know why people keep doubting him. If he says that he's going to do that. I believe him. He says he's going to fix things there. I believe him because he hasn't done anything yet that he said he was going to do and he didn't pull it off, I don't think. So I put my trust in him in that way, but I admit I may be biased just because of the whole SpaceX thing. But, you know, uh, we'll see what happens with that. I know people have strong opinions on it one way or the other. I'm never going to be the type to do that. Like I said, I, I always look at these things from a business standpoint. And, uh, you know, $44 billion is a lot of money, unless you're Elon Musk. He'll make that money back in a couple years. I have no doubts that he will... He will make that money back. So, uh, I, I will it get me back on Twitter? I mean, look, the uh, only thing I ever use Twitter for is sports stuff. Uh, I don't really go there for the day-to-day. I've got my Discord now for things like that. So, I'll never be like a big-time Twitter user ever again. Uh, I think with Twitter, like I said, uh, it's just it's still the best way to get sports news because it's, you know, it's live. It's, you know, up to the second sports news. So, following sports, that's still the best way to do it. Everything else, I've got Discord, so I don't really do that. But uh, yeah, good on him for uh, for you know seeing what everybody told him he couldn't do and doing it. So, uh, like I said, regardless of how you feel about him, you got to admire him as a businessman. The guy gets stuff done. But guys, that was my week. What was your week like? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know what you are up to, what you're watching, what you're reading, what you're what you are playing. As always, no wrong answers. You guys have a safe, safe weekend, and I will talk to you when I get back from vacation.